Okay. Um, okay, a couple of other things as I just sort of talked a little bit about the classes. I provide you a couple of different handouts just to, um, you may or may not have already received either one of these. Uh, the, the short little information flyer about the program. But the most important part is on the back with regard to the courses that are currently part of our curriculum um, as of this year. There have been a couple of changes since the, uh, the previous year, but this is the most current listing of the courses that we have affiliated with the program. One course um, that uh, at the very end, it says choose one of the following, and it has the 5866 Real Estate Special Topics. That course is the Geographic Information Systems course. So um, even though that um, it doesn't actually say that, that's what it, it, it is. Um, and as far as the uh, internship, uh, that is an option uh, that very few students are, are potentially going to utilize. Most students are going to take the, uh, the GIS course, but if there's for some particular reason that you really, really want to do um, an internship, we can accommodate that. Uh, now, as far as the actual schedule of classes for this next year, uh, the way that this is, is sort of set up, on the left-hand side over here are our Saturday classes, which are obviously the ones that you're currently enrolled in. On the right-hand side is the schedule for the Tuesday-Thursday evening cohort uh, classes. Now, one of the things to sort of point out um, that they may or may not have been told, you are completely okay with being able to mix and match. So that if you wanted to take a Tuesday night class and a Saturday morning class, you can do that. If you want to take a Thursday night class and a Saturday afternoon class, you can do that. Just all you have to be concerned about is making sure that obviously you complete all the courses, you know, over whatever time frame that you're wanting to, to, to get through the program. Now what you will sort of notice is that for the Saturday um, courses that you're currently taking, that same exact group of courses um, is offered in the winter term for the evening. So it's just flip-flopped, if you will, if you sort of just look at that. The only time that the schedule is identical is over the summer. So um, those are the courses that, that if you don't want to get yourself behind, you obviously have got to take those courses, all of those courses in the summer. Otherwise, you're going to have to wait until the following summer to complete those, those courses. Okay. Um, each semester, there is one online course, and that's identified here in each of the semesters. Uh, simply be aware of that, that, that it, th those courses will run the entire term instead of the eight-week format like um, the on-the-ground classes. So, uh, like I said, just sort of be aware of that. So, any questions on the schedule? Please, no? The Argus, yep. weren't there originally two Argus yeah. courses? Okay, you guys, it's a totally different situation. So, the, the Argus, classes the way they were prior to this year, there were two different courses, one one credit course and one two credit course. One was Argus Developer, one was Argus Enterprise or DCF. What we've done is we've combined that one credit and that two credit class into a singular three credit course that's now being offered that basically does both. Okay, so I just have to catch up with you because I did the two credits all fall one credit short. And so what we have to do is do a special topics that will work out in the range. And uh, I took the due diligence class? Then that is, um, the special topics is replacing that. So don't take special topics? Correct, for you, yes. Okay, other questions on the schedule? Okay, it's pretty straightforward. Um, okay, one of the other things, uh, can I, I'm gonna pull up um, Before you move on, uh, you said that the real estate special topic was geographical. Geographic information systems. Okay. I was going to use the yeah. screen here. Okay. So, okay. 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 Just going to pull a little something real quick. All right. So, one of the other things that we do as part of this program is to, do, and there's a course that's the e portfolio class or electronic portfolio. And so, the other side of the, the handout that I provided you. Um, this was the group of students that took this course in the most recent semester, and I'm going to pull up just a couple of these just so that you kind of get a sense for what these e-portfolios look like. Let's see. Okay, 
So, what an e-portfolio is, is effectively electronic resume, okay? And so as part of the program, one of the requirements is that you will develop this electronic portfolio or electronic resume, and it will be kind of a repository, if you will, for all the work that you have done over the course of the program. And then you will post this to your own website, and ultimately it can be used in place of or in conjunction with the more standard traditional resume. The idea behind this is, okay, you walk into an employer and your employer says, so tell me about what you did in this master's program. You know, what kind of you know, work did you actually complete? What were the, the, the projects like? You know, what was it you actually accomplished? Well, that is the purpose of this um, e-portfolio is so that you can go in and have someone take a look. All right, here are the courses. Um, and he's put out here to the left which one he's completed thus far. And then he has uploaded the different projects for the different courses that he has taken. And so that you should be able to go, so he's taken obviously the real estate development part one, and so what we should be able to do is pull up. Great, he has shown the, uh, the uh, project. So this is uh, so this the Sun West field that yep. he did, that's right. So it gives an idea, so it gives you, you know, obviously as new students coming into the program, um, an idea of kind of what is being done in each of the classes and kind of, of, you know, whether it's a good example or a bad example, it's a, a great way for you to also kind of begin to get a sense of, here are some of the different things that you're gonna be exposed to over the course of the program. But the, the, the primary purpose behind this is for you to be able to tout your own work and to, to have your own sort of portfolio that you can show off to prospective employers or whoever it is that you may be working with in the future, okay? Any questions about that? What do you what do you go to do this? Um, what a lot of the students do is they use Wix, W I X dot com, and that is uh, a site that will actually walk you through the mechanics of sort of setting it up, and it's free. Um, so W I X dot com. At this point, what I would suggest you do as you're getting started in the program is you know, do not erase any of the work that you are um, effectively completing for the program. Keep it on file, and then whenever you get to the e-portfolio class, you'll have all the things that you'll be able to upload and, and put into the portfolio, okay? Oh, okay. All right. Any other questions about that? Okay. And each one of these is going to look a little bit different, but there's going to be some commonalities between them. Just pull up another one here real quick. Um, style and, and specifically you know how you put it all together um, that's another thing to, to sort of mention uh, Mark had, had alluded to it at the end of each class session we upload the videos to YouTube so if you go to youtube.com and you type in in the search MS R-E-D R-E-E -E, it will pull up all the videos that we have uploaded over the past couple of years and right now I think there's at least three or four hundred of these things. Um, I'll we'll do it real quick just to show you. So MSRED, R 
RDE. Okay, and then there's an actual channel for us. I mean, it actually pops them up right here below, but <clears throat> if you click on the actual channel itself, the MSRAD channel, okay, and specifically just click on the videos. All right, so you can see the most recent one that we put up was from Thursday night's class for Thomas Worcester's GIS class. And so, you know, once again, very simply, click on that. I'm going to fast forward here a little bit. Login pop up. Now we'll do this in a minute if you guys. Certainly. First, turn off your first name. Oops. Yeah. Okay. So that's a great way to obviously be able to, if, if for whatever reason, you know, you're not here at the beginning of class, you miss class, you saw something covered in class, but yet you you missed it during class for whatever reason, in the sense that, that you didn't quite catch it, it was maybe a complicated concept, it's a great way to be able to go back, review that, and hopefully, you know, stay connected, okay? Especially with, once again, in my courses, with Real Estate Finance Investments course, we're working through problems, and you're saying, oh my God, he's going so fast, I don't quite, I'm not catching on to this. It's a great way to be able to kind of go back and review and see actually what took place, okay? Make sense? All right? Well, once again, I will put the PowerPoint up in Blackboard, it's a lot easier to see that, so at least you have two resources to manage it uh, as well. So we're trying to give you every access possible. Yes? Uh, right now in Blackboard, there is files in, in your Blackboard, in your course. There's a file from the winter. Is that something that we don't need to look at? Um, so those are, those would be the old files, no, so I, um, so no, you're going to put something new? The new ones. Yes, okay, all right. right. Yeah, because it's like all the classes are there. Yeah. Um, no, that would be, that's not the right one. I, I will make sure that I have the new one. I, yeah, I think what they do is they automatically just carry forward all the information from the previous semester and pop it in there automatically. Mm, they shouldn't do that because I, I update each file to okay. for this class. So I will check that out. I will just that over sure. the weekend okay. because they should let me do that. <laughs> Uh, and this, because this way I put the current syllabus, because I changed the assignments just to reflect that you know the current market and everything like okay. that. So uh, thank you for letting me know that, and I'll make sure it's up to date. Okay, just a couple of other final um, sort of administrative things. Your textbooks. Uh, you know, while the bookstore um, should have those available, I mean, you should obviously be aware that uh, obviously you can buy them on Amazon. Probably get a better deal. Probably uh, uh, get them. Uh, in your hands within a few days, uh, but most of the textbooks for, uh, there's actually a couple of the textbooks for the program that the bookstore doesn't carry for one reason or another, that you have to order directly from the publisher or through Amazon, so just sort of be aware of that. Um, and some of the courses, like this course specifically for the real estate development class, the, the textbook that's used for this course is the same one that's used for the second part of development uh, two, 5879. Same thing is the case for the real estate finance course and the investments course. We use one book, the Brueggemann book, for both of those courses. So I'm here to represent the library and I'm right. talking in a few Bergman minutes. Um, but one of the things we've been talking about is possibly purchasing um, textbooks, which was not formally in the collection development policy, but now I handle it, so we may make some changes. If you could get me a list of the textbooks I'm going to see if we can possibly get some of them electronically with unlimited access. Okay. So great. you would That'd not necessarily have to purchase. You may want it because if this is what you're doing with the rest of your life, you, you may want to have it. That's good to know. Um, but we're playing around with that. So if you could get me a list of those yep. for, for the course. Oh, absolutely. I'll let you know so you can let your students it, know. It's great to have electronic, uh, but even for professionals like myself, I own the book because it's just a great resource to have. I'm just letting you know, but you know, certainly that's a decision you have to make. Uh, one of the other things to sort of mention um, administratively, uh, Mark had already mentioned, I guess, that at around 11.45, you guys are going to probably uh, let out class. And at that point, um, you've got until noon get over to the uh, uh, Orbitz building, probably ought to all just go as a group so that you can get your parking pass for the year. Uh, it's free, 
but you just have to go over there and, and fill out whatever paperwork um, that's necessary. I think you have to give them your registration, registration and your uh, license plate number, that sort of thing. So Where is that building? The Horvitz building is it's the administration building. If we kind of go out the back door, then you sort of cross over. It's like two buildings over. Uh, I'll put up a map on the screen for you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't worry. So if we don't need to do that, then I'm after the class in this building. Uh, it's the same room. Yeah, okay. 12 30. Don't worry. And that actually brings up a, okay, another point. Yep. Yeah. Oh, you were going to say? Um, so after uh, this course is over, you have a 30 minute break before the next class begins at 12 30. You're on your own with regard to lunch. Okay, there is there's Einstein's bagels. It's here in the building, so that you're able to, to go there, um, get a, grab a sandwich or beverage, whatever. Or obviously you can bring your lunch and you know future classes. Um, chances are being able to go off campus within that 30 minute time horizon is probably not going to be feasible. Uh, but think about that for those of you that are going to be here the entire day. That's certainly something you need to I guess at least be aware of. Yes. Not a question. So we're going with the uh, parking uh, yep. sticker. I'm in the process of changing the uh, the title registration of my car uh, from, from my parents to myself. Right. So will that impact on getting? I don't. As long as you have the current registration, mm -hmm. that's all they're really. They're easy about yeah. registration. Yes. Yeah. 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 It should be a problem. You're good. You're okay. Um, the last two topics I wanted to, to go over. One is we have a mentorship program. Now this is an optional program, um, but it's highly recommended that you become involved with. We have a number of very high profile industry professionals that sit on our MSRED advisory board. They have committed each to being a mentor to one or more of our students over the course of their programs. Uh, the extent to which you are interested in that, you know, certainly let me know. Um, what we typically will do is wait until you have been here for at least the first eight weeks before we begin to, to talk about really assigning the mentor to make sure that this is a good fit for you and, and that sort of thing so we don't waste anybody's time by assigning the mentor too early. But the idea behind the mentorship is that this is going to be somebody that you're going to reach out with and, and talk to over the course of the degree program. They're going to hopefully offer up some good insights about career opportunities and potentially put you in contact with people that are going to be best suited to help you depending on what your unique needs are uh, within the development field because you know development is very different in terms of a job market than a lot of fields like you know the, the, the polar opposite of development is like accounting with accounting you get an undergraduate degree or master's degree in accounting and you know you go to work typically for an accounting firm. There's this very standardized, to a certain extent, progression in that accounting firm, and it's all very structured. It's all very you know mechanical, very disciplined. Real estate development, in terms of the employment market, could not be more opposite than that. It's a very fragmented, very unfocused sort of, of job market in the sense that in many instances, a lot of the jobs are going to be going to hear about them and you're going to be given the opportunity by virtue of networking um, events that take place. One of the reasons that the real estate development community is so heavy into networking is for that very reason alone is and it, uh, that you, know, you have 50 or 100 people that you know, get together and they you know, maybe have a couple of drinks and, and the next thing you know well they're talking about well here's this employment opportunity at this particular firm or that particular firm and you know, recommending each other and, and, and that sort of thing. So it's a very, very different sort of job market. Plus, you know, some developers are just a one-person shop. You know, you've got one individual that literally is hiring out or subcontracting all the different skill sets that they may need, whereas other developers, you know, obviously the more the, the, the ones that you in many cases hear more about, like the, the styles development or with a uh, um, related group or the Altman group, you know, those are different folks, um, you know, much larger companies and, and much more full service. So you know, just kind of be aware of that, that, that these mentors can play a really big role in kind of helping you, you know, identify the different people that you would want to be put in contact with, okay? And then finally, one of the things that is part of the program, um, and we are trying to, to get the details worked out, each year we try to do one sort of very significant study tour. 
So for the past two years, we've done a site tour where we go from here to Key West, to Cozumel, and to Grand Cayman, focused on sustainability um, and kind of sustainable sort of tourism development. This year, we're trying to put the final details into going to Cuba. Um, I just got back from Cuba a couple of weeks ago and, and trying to, to lay some of the groundwork to make this all work. And the plan is that in December, basically December the 11th to the 18th, is the time frame that we're, we're trying to get things put together for Cuba. That would be a, obviously a week long trip to Cuba. We would cover a good portion of the cost associated with that trip um, as part of your tuition. Um, but that will be literally would occur the, the, the day after you finish your last class and your last set of exams for um, the fall semester. So be aware of that, that, that more information on that will be forthcoming as it sort of develops. But unfortunately, it's, it's kind of, we've got a lot of different uh, um, issues that we're trying to resolve. The, um, and Cuba is infinitely more complicated for a variety of reasons. With this particular study tour, what we're wanting to do, as I said, a week-long tour, we're, we're looking at, at um, having a joint trip between our students and the MBA entrepreneurship students uh, and kind of uh, try to uh, be beneficial to both groups. So anyway, so I said more information on that uh, forthcoming. So let me think there's anything else that I've got. Nope, I think that's pretty much it. Okay, any questions for me? Okay, great. Thank you very much. Uh, that, that trip to Cuba is this December? Yes. Um, so, aside from the final details, are those dates locked in? The dates are locked in. So, December 11th to the 18th. 18th. So, just block that off of the calendar. It's just a, now it's just a question of Where? whether, whether, because we're exploring whether or not we're going to do a cruise ship there or whether or not we're going to, to fly or take some sort of a super fast ferry and trying to work those sort of details out and some of the connections that we've got there. Have, have you found out if uh, students who were born in Cuba have to go through a special... And that I honestly don't know the answer to. Were you born in Cuba? Yeah. That's interesting. Wow. Yeah. So I don't know the answer. Yeah, yeah. Uh, by plane, not by. They may not let you right. back they, in. They, you cannot go in by boat, and um, wow, I might have to request a Cuban passport. I'm an American citizen. Yeah, but I course. might have to go through the whole shebang as I as and pay for all of that, as I was uh, born as a. We'll have to give you a national. Uh, we'll have to give you a, a fake name. And, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I was thinking that perhaps through the uh, through the um, through the school. There might be different... Uh, and, and there may be, and once again, that is not something I know the answer to at this point in time. Okay. But I'm gonna, we're going to obviously it, have to find it, out. It is complicated for Cuba. I believe you. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, um, so but stay tuned. Uh, if we can get it to work, it would be a fascinating opportunity. No question about it. So, uh, so I'm going to take Ben to this opportunity now. We're going to introduce uh, Susan Berkman. And I don't know your title anymore. Uh, I am the uh, Assistant Director of Collection Development and Technical Services. Sounds Great. like a mouthful, which it is. And I'll explain what that means. So she's me? here today in her official capacity. Okay. I'm going to pass around the attendance sheet because I need that for the library. So it's a That's system. great. Um, so and so for the next, however, I'm going to disappear because I have to do some administrative issues for the next, uh, I'll be back in about 20 minutes, okay. but, but, but she'll be, I'll be yeah. <laughs> she'll be here for the next 30 or 40 or so. Uh, so it's all about resources, and I think it's very valuable and important, so please give your, your undivided attention, and as I said, I'll be back. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Susan Berkman, you heard my long title, I have cards here. Um, I was formerly the business um, subject specialist for, for Heisman. So I've been library and been promoted. Um, and there is another person who um, couldn't be here today who's actually doing instruction for the business school. So, but he happens to be working on the desk today. And that's Mitch Winterman is his name. 
Um, so you may hear from him in the future, whatever. So how many of you are new to NOVA altogether? Almost all of you. <laughs> okay, well that's fine. And you are new or have you been here? I started in the, in, in, in the winter semester. Okay. Did you think, have library instruction? I don't think so. Okay. Well, you would remember <laughs> if you did. Okay. So basically, what I'm going to go through parts of the um, library website today, and um, you'll see there's a lot of help for you. Um, I. So now when I'm in charge of, okay, look, I used to just deal with business. I still do buy the business books for, for uh, requests that people ask for, um, and also to support the, the classes that we have at Heisinger. But I also buy those databases that we have. That's all, everything for the Alvin Sherman Library, which is right next door. Do not make yourself a stranger. Um, I, that's what I'm in charge of negotiating those contracts and making sure we're getting usage of the databases that we have and, um, and looking for new resources all the time. So that's my role here, as well as gifts and donations that come into the library, and there are many of them. Um, we have a, a, an annual, well, semi-annual used book sale that's the end of October, also a part of my time. Um, Okay, so let's. So this is our, the library's homepage. It's Sherman.library.nova.edu. If I were you, I'd bookmark this page. This way, you can always get back there, and if we're going to talk about today, you'll be able to find here. Um, Nova is a Nova. The Alvin Sherman Library is a joint use facility, which means that Broward County gives us money. It makes us public as well as private for the university. So that means when you're not studying and you have a break, um, on the first floor of the library, we have materials that we, you would find in a public library. There's DVDs, there's video games, there's Blu-rays, there's <coughs> magazines, bestsellers, you know, and a huge children's all the way up the um, young adult section. There's a lot of programming going on there, so if you have kids, or, anyway, just keep your eye on things that are going on over there, because there's a lot. The first thing that I want to point out is the hours. The library is open seven days a week. Um, the reference uh, area, which is where I came from, um, is on that desk seven days a week. Um, they're, op they're on there from um, 9 in the morning till 9 in the evening, Monday through Thursday. Um, Saturday, they're there from um, and maybe 8 to 8. I'm not sure if they're there the whole day, but there's somebody there most of the time. Same thing on Sunday, it's from 11 to 9. There's someone on the reference desk. So if you ever have questions, about an assignment or some other research you're doing, there's, there should be somebody there that can help you with that. Along with that, we have this Ask a Librarian tab, okay? So here, the reference desk is open until 9, 8 on Saturday, and then there's an hour chart here. You can call the reference desk, and here's the number. You can email the reference desk, and, and um, you know, they answer those all the time. You can chat with the librarian. Um, I recommend if you have a, an involved question, you're not going to use chat. It gets really involved. It's much easier to pick up the phone and speak to someone. Um, but if you want to know what time they close today because you forget, or if we have a book or something, that's a fine way to do that. Um, and also, and you can text too, that this is important too. You can, do we have an appointment? Um, feature. So if you need to meet one-on-one -on -one with a librarian and you've got, you know, more than a five-minute question, you can schedule up to from 30 minutes to an hour with a librarian, one-on-one. -on -one. And you can put in the times that you're available and the days that you're available. Are any of you full-time or are you all working full-time? Working full-time? Full Most of you? Okay, so you can schedule an evening appointment if you need to. Um, it's Saturday, the weekends are a little tougher to have an appointment, but they can work with you. 
they will also, if you can't come in, so say, you know, either you have class or you have something else, they will schedule, you can do it by phone, you can do a go-to meeting, you can, they will work with you, and those are all options on the form here. So, you know, if you're at work and you have time at lunch that you can, you know, that works for you, that they can do a go-to meeting with you or a phone call, they will do that. Okay, so just know that they're here to help you and they're available. Any questions about that? Okay, so here's like, you know, you can tell them what's your topic, whatever. Um, and then here's all your you know, your four options of when you're available. 30 to 60 minutes, how you would like to receive. So this you're on in person or by phone or whatever. Okay. Um, I'm gonna get into the catalog and everything afterwards, but I just want to work about what's down here. So on the, um, the borrow part, um, this is things that might be on course reserves. I don't know if you're professors are doing that, but sometimes you might want a quiet place to study, and you can click on study rooms here. So this is for today, and it's going to give you all of the study rooms and what time it's open. Okay, so if it's blue, it means that's an open period of time. Um, there is also, and so you'll see that also the number of seats. So if you're, it's a group project, you might want a bigger room. Four is the smallest, so that's if you're by yourself, that's fine. Um, and then you can also book these up to two weeks in advance. So be aware of that, because once it comes to like finals time and midterms and everything, those rooms are booked. So do yourself a favor, and if you need to do that, just book it out ahead of time. And um, there's also, um, last year they opened up on the third floor of the library. It's the length of the building, um, a collaborative study room. This, this room, you cannot go in there and study by yourself. You have to be a group or they're going to kick you out. Um, but there's, so I know that you will have a group project in this class. There's a, there's a separate room within there that you need to reserve, but the, the other rooms are all open. The area is totally open. You can plug in your computers and share one computer and put all your stuff together. I know it's, I will tell you that by, usually by the end of, the, of um, by the time you get to that in, your, in the class, you're, it's all like last minute and you're all freaking out. So if you plan accordingly, just know that that place is available for you. It's a really nice space, beautiful light. today or sometimes you know it's midnight there's no one at the reference desk and you forget how to do something uh, right here is the we have library learn videos so if you're going into any of these and you want to know you know how to use uh, peer review creating a concept app there's all different kinds of topics in here so look to see if there's something in here um, that will help you these are like two to three minutes they're not long help you go back and get that kind of information. Okay. Um, Razor's Research Bites is another thing. This is a course in your Blackboard class. Under In Blackboard, there's one that says NSU Libraries. This is a course you can take and get a certificate in. So the Razor's Research Bites is kind of general how to use the library stuff. It's also videos, some of it's just charts, it's a whole um, different modules for that. And there's also one for business. And at the end, you get a um, certificate of completion for those. Um, we're introducing those now at the business school. Um, and some of the other classes, they're gonna be, it's gonna be a requirement, but again, it's a good way for you. If you haven't been in school for a while, or um, you know, use a library, or don't know how to use our library, please know that that's um, that course is available for you, and you might want to work yourself through it. Okay, we're almost getting into the part that you're going to find extremely useful. But we also have workshops. Um, some classes, you may have to do a paper, you need to do APA, you don't remember the last time you did that. Um, 
And so there's a lot of different things coming up. So these, you should check back on these. So here's one, a library introduction, which will be this week. It's at 8 o'clock at night. So it's online. Um, you can take that if you, you know, want to get re-familiarized with things that either talk about today or things that are more in-depth. Um, uh, so here's again, here's EndNote. Um, which is another thing that people use when they're doing more involved research. Um, another library introduction, and I keep repeating them, and there's more coming up. And also, and I brought these cards for today, um, these were passed out to the faculty, but they're also recommended for um, students, especially grad students. And one that's coming up that I think is, um, that might be really helpful for you, are the, um, the first one, which is on September 6th, that's noon, and um, it's, we do them in person, but you can also sign up at the same time when you register. Let's see if we can get there. Okay. So here's the whole schedule for the year, but this first one is from noon to one. You um, can register for it here, and it's on data visualization. So a lot of what you do kind of involves data, and you may want to learn how to, different ways to present that. So this workshop that's coming up, I think um, you might find really useful, especially for this class. The, um, if you can't attend it, you can still register. You can, you can um, participate online. It's going to be one of the ones that they are going to do online. And they record all of those, too. So if you can't be there at lunchtime, can't do whatever, Sign up for it anyway, and as soon as the, um, the tape is available, they will send you a link to the recording. But you have to sign up in order to get that. Okay, so um, I'm going to leave some of these in the back when I um, leave today, so you'll have those too. These are some other ones that might, if you ever want to publish, but they're, they're really kind of interesting. Grant writing this might be another one you might be interested in that's coming up as well. So, um, your Okay, and then they just go here, you can register for them as they keep going. Any questions about that? Um, for the reservations of these yep. conference rooms, I know you said that like during final six times they get pretty... The study rooms. Yeah, they get pretty booked up. Right. So just... What's so if you... so. You know, you you know, you're the week before midterms or finals, whatever. I would you can book up to two weeks in advance. So is think there a ahead. limit on how long you can book it for? I believe it's two uh, two hours and then two hours, like two. I think it's four hours at a time. So I don't you book it you and then the person you're with books it right after. That right? could happen. That and then you can have a longer yeah, time in the room. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, because that's something that. Um, You'll find it's like they come, you know, where are they going to go? Everybody's going to get the same time. We do during um, midterm week and finals. The library does offer snacks at the on the reference board. You can come get a snack. Okay, and then there's some other ones here, different campuses where they're doing different things and other presentations here as well. So just keep your eye on that workshop page. Okay. Um, also, I want to put in here the library guides. Okay, so there's one. You can scroll down here or you can start typing, but since this is at the beginning of the alphabet, we can go there. So, do yep. we get uh, subscriptions to certain things for free? Like? Uh, I don't know, like The Economist or Barron's or. Uh, I mean, I get them, but I was just curious. So, yes. remind me when we get to the. I'll show you how to find those. Okay. Okay, so we're going to, the first one that has everything on it, I'm just telling you because I know that. So um, Mitch, who I mentioned before, is the one, he's kind of reorganizing a little bit, and there's been some things that have um, not transferred over yet, but I want to show you that we've put together um, there's a page for every one of the majors in, in the school, okay? So if we went to real estate, and it's, as I said, this is not finished yet. Um, 
here's some ones that you should be aware of. There's a lot more. I'm going to go through a couple of them today through the business site. But know that it's here. And there's also, he's embedded some um, videos in here as well. So you can, you know, here's how to access the databases. So in case you forget how to do that, it's there. Bloomberg has a bunch of uh, things that are interesting also for real estate, um, as well as other Business and in this particular area, folks, if you want to open up your laptops and get online and see where you can go find demographics now, this is this is helpful. Right. I'm going to show you up through the business page where it is. Great. Also. Good. I just want to make sure this is when it's permissible to open up those laptops. Oh, okay. And be, you know, when, when it's appropriate. All right. I just want to make <laughs> sure. Because I told them to close their laptops uh, earlier. Okay. okay. I just want to make sure they yeah. know that. So when I told you to bookmark the Sherman you know, library page, this would be a good time to do yes, that. Yes, folks, there we definitely. I guess that's a I was right. going to say we should learn how to use the Bloomberg machines. There should be a course on that. And there so probably should be. Do you know, of that, speaking of that, because the, 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 I uh, haven't gotten to that, I forgot to, I was actually with the dean this week. Did the business school get them? Get any? Bloomberg terminals? So like you know Gosh, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I will tell you, though, that the law school did, yeah. or is getting them. Okay. And I am sure there will be some kind of instruction. I've asked for instruction on them. Yeah, because it's a totally different. It's, I know. It's a totally different. This is Bloomberg, this Bloomberg BNA um, this database has a lot of different reports and news on various business areas, but not only just business, also the economy, on trade, on um, taxation, you know, various things, and there is a real estate report that you might be interested in just checking out um, regularly. What, what what is the Bloomberg machine? Is that like yeah? So Bloomberg, Bloomberg is is one of the leading database resources for all sorts of business news, and and of course they do. And, and I will tell you, I mean, I go to the Bloomberg Economic Calendar every day, and, and I'll print out that as a link as well. Um, so any links that you have, because you, you'll see we have a section here on websites mm -hmm. that you want to have us include, we can add them to the library. Great, and I'll send them to you. Okay, that's, that's a great, great idea. Yeah, we should, because I'm thinking even now, like the ones, some of the ones that um, Fred right. mentioned, you know, the Wix.com one, um, the, the, the YouTube channel, I'm going to, I think should be on that list of websites as well for them to go back to class. Uh, of course, uh, you know I'm 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 not into watching videos for three or four hours, but that's for the students to decide because I think the in-class experience is far superior. Uh, so I am very highly focused on something like demographics now, folks. I mean I think that's a I really key, a really key something for everybody to look at. So I'll let you continue. And over here we have some books that we have many more than this, and this actually does need to be updated. But here's a you know thing about finding books in the library yeah. catalog. Um, we're going to be updating these too because we have a lot of some I think better things than we have um, from like the Urban Land Institute books that we have. And here's website. So again, this is where we can add some of the things that your professors send to us, and we will add them to this. Um, and then we're going to go back to this business home guide. So what we did was we put things that were more specific to. The programs in here, there was a general page, which somehow all of those resources are not actually, um, the general page has not translated over, so that's why I'm going to go through the other databases. No. Okay, <coughs> any questions on the library guide? You too, feel free to email us with the sites that you think are relevant that we should put on here. I mean, you know, this, so these are websites outside of what the library offers. I'm going to leave my um, some business cards in the back too. Okay, so let's go back out, and now we're going to start getting into the how do I do this? I'm going to go back to the library's home page. Okay. So there's four tabs up here, and there's some tabs over here as well that we're going to talk about. Um, NovaCat is our catalog. It's the old-fashioned card catalog for you who might remember that, or some of you probably never heard of such a thing. Um, so this is where you're looking for books, media, periodicals, things like that. So if we put in, um, let's just do real estate development, and we hit search.
So here we have real estate development principles and processes. Um, there's, a, there's a bunch of them here, and some of these actually may be textbooks. We may not have a full license on them. Um, I don't think it sounds like it might be something that Fred was talking about. If you see this ebook here, that means it is an ebook, and then you can click on this and, and, and get to it. We, um, Um, urban design and real estate process, and then if it's you now, and then you'll see this little icon here, printed material, which means that it is a book, not an ebook, and it'll tell you that it's available. If it's not available, you can place a hold on a book, and then as soon as it comes back in, um, we will. Uh, you'll get a notice <coughs> from the circulation desk saying you have five days to pick it up. If you don't pick it up. Then you're going to go to the next person on hold. Um, again, so here's a, some other ones that we have. You'll see the as a, as a university, we we buy E preferred. Okay, so E is our first choice. We sometimes have E and the print, depending on whatever. Um, but because we have so many distance students, especially in the graduate programs, um, we need to, we want everyone to have access. So we find out that it's like a textbook that the um, professors are using, we will then get um, an unlimited copy E, and we may have a print copy that might be on reserve. So if it's on reserve, that means we have like, I think, two hours. So if you needed to, you know, if it's everyone's trying to get the same book at the same time, that that's one that should be put on reserve, and then you can go scan a copy and send it to yourself for free on the second floor. There's a scanner, on, um, and then you know the next person can get the book as well. Okay. So that's how you would go through and see what's here. Um, this is a dissertation. So there's all kinds of materials that are in here. Do we have um, Westlaw accounts or no? Only the law school students have Westlaw. Okay. You may, I'm not sure about this, but you may be able to go to the law school, because everyone knows there's a building next door to you. Um, they have a library there. They have, they do have public terminals that you can use there. So if you're familiar with it, um, you can use those when the law library is open someone else's leave. That's also, I believe, where the, there's going to be a, a couple of public um, Bloomberg term, terminals. Okay. I'm not sure how many, but that's what they're going to be housed at the law school. So if I find out any more information about the Bloomberg ones, I'll try to let your professor know, because the, the law school is going, is going to be, uh, especially the library, has undergone a construction. Um, a reconstruction over the summer that was supposed to have been done already, but as we all know, yeah, it doesn't good. always um, to be on time. <laughs> so some of the law libraries, librarians are actually in the Alpha Church Library right now. And, you, and if you need help with that, you can always email them and ask those questions too. Okay. Any questions on how to find a book? Oh. When we were on that Nova account page, I just want to point this out because we made it a little, a lot more obvious than it used to be. You see up here, if you're looking for something and you're not finding what you're looking for, and we make sure we don't have it, you can suggest a purchase. All of those come to me from everywhere, the public library, whatever. Um, I then pass it on to the appropriate person who buys for that, whatever that is, because it could be a, you know, it could be a, a fiction book, it could be um, a book for the, you know, for the business school, it could be for education, it could be whenever I, I send it to the appropriate uh, person, and they decide whether we should get it or not. If it fits with the collection, they will also get back to you with an answer of whether we got it or did not get it, um, and why, and when you might expect it in there. So I just want you to. 
know that. You pay attention to those two. Okay, so full text finder. Um, so you wanted to know if we had um, barons, right? So that's one. And you, okay, so when you want to know if we have a publication, okay, you can go in here and type in the name, and then it'll show you which one of the um, of the databases house it. Okay, so this is what it used to be. I'm seeing because it ended in '87, then starting in '88. Okay, so ABI Inform has it to present. Um, <coughs> counting some of these other databases have it to present. So you can go to any one of those. Um, when we get to the databases, I'll show you another one. So then when you click on that, you would log in with your credentials, your sharp username and password. Okay. So I'll show you the latest available issue is right there. And then you can go down here. So if you're looking for any specific other issue, you would click on the years and um, you'll get it here. And look, you'll be able to check it out there. Okay, so go to August. Here's all the issues in August. You can read it online. Um, you can also set up an alert up here on the left, upper left here. So if you want to know when the next issue is there because you know you forgot to read it, whatever, you can set up an alert and when the new issue is there, you'll get an email that it's there and there's a link to it. Did yes. I totally miss something? I'm getting this easy proxy. Let me see what you got. When you, did, which one did you click on? Did you link? You're going to sign in through the library's home page. Okay? Because when you, okay, this is a really important thing for you to understand. If you log in, if you log in through the library's page and you get to something that we have, it's, it, uh, it's going to ask you to pay for that article. Okay, so what is the actual library? Okay, Sherman dot library.
Oh, you missed yes. that. Just kidding. Well, yeah. <laughs> that's okay. Click on full text line. That's where you could type in the name of a journal and see if we have it, a publication. Or when you're doing research and you have a citation and it's telling you it's in the Journal of Real Estate and it's in this issue in this volume, then you're going to type in the title of the journal, not the title of the article. I'm going to repeat that. You type in the name of the journal, not the title of the article. And then you'll see which databases house that journal. And then you would look for the specific volume and issue that you need for whatever you're looking at. OK? Everybody clear on that? Probably going to forget this until you have to actually do work. But that's why we have librarians available for you all the time. OK, so then you would open this up. And then you can search. Or you can search within all of the, the barons and, and look here. OK? But if you want to read things on a regular basis, this is a good place to go. OK. So you can set that up as your, um, you know, an alert to let you know when that's available. And I'll show you another one that's kind of interesting. I don't know. There's going to be a link on the right hand side directly to it. And then it's telling you, did you know that you can search Google Scholar? There you the go. Library. So um, the only thing this will not tell you is you know, whether in, in using Google Scholar, if you have a class where you need peer reviewed, you won't know that. It's academic, but it's not necessarily peer reviewed, and then you have to go through another process. So that's why another reason why we encourage you to use the database is because you can limit peer-reviewed and academic if you need you know if you need to for a particular class but anyway so here's so then you would just click on this and it's going to take you directly to that article and again you have you know there it is and you can just download it or whatever and get your information but let's just make sure again how everybody gets the Google Scholar within the library that's okay. sure to show so again, this was catalog is for searching for books and periodicals and other media, so DVDs or games if you need to do that. Full text finder, um, you can also pull this down or contains if you're not sure what the exact title of something right. is, you know, you can do that. Google Scholar, Google Scholar, third one. That's where you're gonna put it in and you're gonna find out whether we have it already and you save yourself that extra step of then going back into the catalog or going back into Full Text Finder to look up that citation. So it is time saving for you. And the benefit of this is that in fact, so instead of getting everything on the web which simply is not vetted, then you actually get something other than the junk that appears. And so if you want to do a specific search on an issue, then at least you'll get some validation. I won't say it's completely accurate, but you'll get some level of validation for it. And that's important when you're doing research. Okay. And then we're going to go here to um, APA. This is an app. We're actually looking to another product that's kind of this on steroids. Um, but yeah, we're just, there'll be a trial for it in September that's pathos and pathos. So how do I cite, you know, periodical? Type that in there. And then there's going to be, you know, different articles on how to do that and examples on how to do that as well. When you're doing research for any paper, any footnoting, 
APA, the American Periodical Association, is that what it stands American, for? American, it's actually the American Psychological Psychological, excuse me, thank you. I should know. Uh, <laughs> but that's the, uh, the standard handbook, if you will, right. on making sure that it's properly referenced for anything that we look for. Um, not well, here. I think one of the colleges uses I think it, I thought it used to be Chicago Manual style also. Yeah, well, there's, yeah, but most of the colleges at NOVA use APA, but there mm -hmm. is one, That's maybe correct. law might use something, maybe use in Chicago. I'm not sure which ones use something else. What is that? What are we using? Hmm? What are we using? This, uh, APA. APA. You will hear APA ad nauseum. Um, <laughs> There's also, so here's like how to do in-text citations and there's information there. There's little tabs up here, reference lists, resources, and how to find that information. We do a lot of workshops at the, at the library on that, yeah. specifically. Okay, so now we're getting into the databases and this is what I wanna show you. So if you know a specific one you wanna go to, you can always click on this, you can start typing it and it'll show up and here's a list of all of them and it goes on. For this purpose, we're going to go back to. We're going to the second one under there was um, all the databases, and this is so this is all of them. We're going to go back like this: databases by subject. If you click on that, there is one for business, but there's some other ones to accounting, taxation. And we just want to go to see all subjects right here. And we're going to scroll down. So there's a couple of things I want to point out before we go to business. Because right now, um, one of the ones that should be there is not there right now. We will add it under maps. The digital Sanborn maps is something that you might find useful for this class or any other um, real estate classes that you took. So this is, you know, 100 years of maps from pre-1970. So we're going to have to look back on of what something looked like. You'll notice some towns and things aren't even in here. They're one of the newer places. Okay? That just know that that's under maps, it's not under business. And then under um, yeah. So these are subjects up here. Then there's uh, material types down here. So if you're looking for conference papers, you need uh, specific dictionaries, newspapers and current events, some of them are on, um, some of them are in the business thing, but not all of them. And uh, there's one I want to show you also that's on here. I'm just going to go to F. I'm not sure what subjects is under. And it's called Flipster. So when you're talking about magazines, things like that. We are adding to this all the time. There's categories here, so under, if you go to business, but there's a lot of other ones. This is there's another thing. If you want to have stuff in your, do things in your, you know, there's like men's health, there's, there's uh, you know, if you're into crafts, there's all different kinds yeah. of interests there that you can look at. We are always adding to this. These are specifically business, but when you click on something like this, if you go to, you know, Bloomberg Business Week, Okay, I'm gonna go back to that. Let me just find, make sure that this is open. Because this is like the city. Okay. Let's try a different one. Let's go to Fortune. The city's not even there. Okay, which city? Uh, Nicomas. Is it a new, kind of new city? Uh, it no, no, I was actually told that uh, people of influence there. This is why I looked it up. Oh, okay. Paid the right people to not have it on the map a while ago. Oh. And it was to keep other people from going there. And actually, Michael Bloomberg just bought a house over there, too. Oh, okay. Yeah. But that's why I was looking on the, the fire thing. Oh, the, to the, see the if that was a true thing, and it's and not there. Maybe, th and so maybe that's true. Um, how, how did you get to the... Uh, I'm going to show you this. I just want to show you what the platform looks like. If you look up any of those magazines, you'll see here. So it's just like, if you could just read it online. You can go here and just turn the page. you see the ads. It is just a PDF of the magazine. 
You can take this with you on vacation. When you're traveling, you can download the issue. So this is, I'm, I like to point this out because it's not normally pointed out in classes, but you want to keep up with stuff you're at the beach. You can I'm sorry. So is Flipster, uh, this database of all the magazines, uh, accessible on, on tablets or phones? Yes. Yes. Yeah. You still have to go there through the library's page to do it, and then down you can download it and save it. Um, and then here's back issues. We've only started doing this, I think, for two years, so that's as far back as it'll go. But we, in, we you know, in print, we usually don't hold on to it. So which magazines can we do this for? This is for, well, anything that's listed here. So let's go back. And the reason why I ask, because, I mean, I have, I think, there are certain magazines, of course, that I would suggest that are valuable to do this for. Okay. So if you scroll back up, one of the this best magazines is right there, Bloomberg Business Week. Right. Okay. Which is it's just clearly just one of the best ones. It right. Just so you is. Click on the one soon. Right. Whoops. What happened? happened? I'm going to let them know there's some issues going on. So right. She'll get this fixed, folks. Uh, yeah. And if you ever have an issue with that, so you just can send email. That, send, email me. I'm gonna, as I said, I'll leave my cards in the back. Email um, the other librarian, someone, and they we will get it to the right person to fix that. Because yeah. that's, no, not, that's yeah. not my okay. thing. Sorry, I keep losing because I'm trying to okay. see how to. Okay, function. let me show you how to get you, there. Yeah, that, yeah. That's, that's the big that's, question. Just right? I'll go back, folks. Okay. Make sure we all have it. This is what's in. Okay, just so you see, this is what's under business right now. Yeah. How do you get to this page? Let's make show. sure we can all get okay. to this web page. where it's listed in all of the if under subjects or anywhere. So there's a from the first page when you're on when you're on going into databases by subject. Or you could also do this one by name. If you remember Flipster, you could just look up Flipster in that databases by name. You click on the F here. Right, so we you went to databases by name. Right, well we didn't we, let's go back. Databases by name. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is what you want to remember. You're going to go in Flipster, and then it shows up right here. Right, you click on that. All right, there you go, folks. Okay. And there you see the. There's magazines. all these different topics. Consumer Consumer Reports so is under Consumer um, Entertainment. But go, to, but go to Business, and that's probably where we all want to go. Right. So you're going to go to Business. And there you Just see the interests, though. And there's Business Week. It comes right up in number three. Nice. All right, really easy, folks. Yeah. But and then we get an error. All right, so we'll go back. So then okay, the next so one. So when you're here, we'll we'll go back. it's not working. It's, it's going back. So we'll, we'll go, go back. back. Let's go to history. Hmm. <coughs> All right, so we know that we're supposed to. Yeah, we're going to Cuba. You might want to look at the All right, travel. so we're going to go to Forbes instead. I cannot. And then you can see there. how you can just simply pick up that. Let's see how you get it. Let's just go back. So we'll just go back to back to database home. Go back. Yeah, it seems like some of the links aren't working today. Really easy. Go back to email. So we're gonna try Forbes. Go back to email. Forbes. Oh no. Mm. Okay. Database There's some other. One. If you know of a title and it's available yeah. in this format, can you also let me know that that yes. you really but think would be? Thank you so much. Is that Yeah. Okay. One of my father's companies was in there, and uh, this was a while ago, though. And they totally paid to be in the top 500, and that's how all of the companies get. Well, hopefully not all of them. Well, the majority. I know a couple people that were in the top. Right. So, but if you look at like Fortune, then they may not be paying very well. So Fortune buyers. Maybe different, right. but it, you know that's how business is. <laughs> <laughs> really, I mean, you're this is the real world MBA, right? So yeah. I mean, you know, you're no, I mean, I know, I know that's how world, business you're, works. You know, masters in real estate, okay? This is unfortunately how it goes. An entrepreneur just tries to sell you uh, franchises. Yeah, this is entrepreneur stores, but then we have entre um, entrepreneur. 
I think we're, um, I put in for a fast company, which kind of has some really kind of um, high tech type things and stuff like that. I, I asked them to add that this year, and we'll see what else comes up. And also, if you want to also get, get ESPN. Uh, it has an right there. You can actually download them? Yes, you can actually download them to your device. Right. That's what I'm saying. So if you're going somewhere and you have your iPad or your tablet with you and you want to read this, right. this, and this, you can you can do that and, and you, can, you can read it That's wherever you are. Or flight is just a really great There you go. Or wherever. Okay, any questions on Flipster? Because this is usually not mentioned in any of the classes, but I think it's such a great resource, and especially for you to you know, yes. keep on touch with really it. Again, great. you can set up an alert here too so that they will let you know when the next issue is available. Okay. So I'm trying to make this practical for you as well, besides all this work you want to do. But this is all part of your career here anyway and after, so. Okay. So let's go back to our databases by subject and we're going to type in business. So when you click on, so this is the business databases, okay? We have top picks. And the reason we do that is so that sometimes you just don't know where to start. Um, so just so, I'm not going to go through all of these, but the top two are really kind of very general for business. You can actually type anything in there and, and get that information. But read some of the stuff in here because there are market research reports in ABI Inform. There's also market research um, reports in Business Source Premier. So if you want to know about some and they happen to carry it, they will have those in there as well. Um, Emerald is from the UK, provides a whole different perspective on business topics. Uh, LexisNexis Academic Business, this is one of the cool things about this database, because it's not one of my favorites, but I will tell you. These company profiles, if you click on search by subject or topic, and you go to this companies and then do a dossier, You can create a company list here. So that's the that's the one thing I want to point out here. So if you are looking, you're working and you're looking to prospect for customers, this would be a good place for you to go. <coughs> and it's the only database we have that does such a thing. So you can you know limit your geographic area. Um, you can look for how many employees they have, look at their revenue, look within a, a, um, you know, a NAICS code or a SIC code. You can do that and create a list of make prospects for you and you can export that list into Excel. And then you have a prospect list to work from. Okay. Sorry, I can't see you. She's hiding. I know. <laughs> no, she didn't know this room. Any questions about that or anything I've talked about so far? I know we're getting on the same list. Okay. Um, here's those Bloom, um, Bloomberg VNA online resources that we mentioned. Again, you can look in for different areas there. I'm going to just talk about these. Okay. Access World News. This has news from all over the world. It goes down to the the local level of any area that you're talking about. So if you went into say Palm Beach or, you know, or Broward or whatever. They'll have the local newspapers for there, but also internationally. So if you want to follow up on what's going on, maybe from where you're from originally or whatever, that is a list of um, topics that are there as well. Science Direct, do not let the name fool you. Um, is they have a ton of business information in there, sometimes more than some of the ones we consider business. Okay. Um, then we do have here, I want to show you the demographics right, so we'll particular. To, right, so demographic family will check because it's, it's not working it's for whatever reason. Let's see, see if it's working for it, it gets hung. So you'll just oh. have to. Okay. Because that's an important well, demographic. So one of, the one of the things that there. you'll get from this database, you can go down and get demographic information so granular to the to the tract of the area from or county or you know they really narrow it down by blocks they will actually give you that information there's sections on there so that's my key demographic demo database for our market analysis right so 
they could look at how, housing right. information, housing under construction. So when think of, remember this when you're doing your project, yeah. um, because you'll you can see what's going on, what the demographics are for a particular area, where are you going to be doing your project, and things like that. Um, there's also some regional business news down here. Well, the other one is a number 56 South Florida Business I was Journal. That's on there. And that's the other one that I like to do. Now, I have, a, I have my own subscription to it, but this is a great way to go in uh, because it's the real estate news on the South Florida Business Journal that you all want to be focused on. Okay. So instead of making you pay 80 bucks a year, this is how you get it. Okay, so it's called South Florida Business Journal. However, it does cover all of the business journals that are out there. You can limit it by year under the city. Yeah. So is there a way that they can set a, uh, where this gives them, uh, I don't know how you do the alert, but I want them to be somehow where it sends them information on real estate in South Florida. Does the, um, does the library have like a vehicle for us because there's a lot of different databases here, right? To like favorite these databases so we can just go to one point and select Slipster, go to South Florida, instead of having to go through all the databases, go to the letter. Well, that's the that real estate entry path. So what we want to do is see if we can customize that real okay. estate portal that okay. you have there. So you want me to add Flipster to that? Well, I, I mean, mean, no, I mean, not just Flipster. No, okay. What we'll do is to see if we can somehow dig into, you know, the real estate, like Ryan Bandel's column. On South Florida Business Journal, or we can get to a number of, or okay, the demographics so now on, South, on real estate. And so if we can pull up those three, four, or five different focus points, that will really be a great entry point for all the students here. Okay, if so if you send me those, I will. that would be helpful. And, 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 and as soon as you disappear, or actually just have your closure, I'm going to show all the links for those various okay, items, perfect. Uh, which is my next part of my presentation. Okay, great. So. Um, so again, here you pick out your area. Um, you can search all the. Yeah, and the beautiful so thing, South Florida Business Journal is part of the whole national chain of, uh, or this particular brand of the business journals. You can go so to you can really see everything. And then, um, but we're particularly residential or Florida. commercial real estate. So let's say we go to residential. And, and you can leave it open if you want, and not search for anything in particular. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, one thing is interesting, so for example, folks, do any of you read the South Florida Business Journal? Yeah. I mean, because for example, you can, read, an article will come up and it will be about restaurants or about stores or something, and it's about real estate. So it's not just about real estate. And so when uh, Wawa is opening up 100 stores in South Florida, it's about them searching for real estate. So you've got to be tuned to the different trends about business, not just about real estate. And that's what makes it so interesting. And then, and this is an interesting article actually, you know, just popped up, developers swing towards the green. What's going on with golf courses as they can't make their money? They're selling. That's right. So now that's a real estate article, not just a golf course article. So, you know, you've got to begin to connect the dots and everything that's being put together. In fact, if you just want to say for a few more minutes as I go through this, sure. on my part, I'll I'll it shows you about the links, you'll be alert to it, and I'll send you all those links. Perfect. Okay, great. Okay, all right, thank you, Susan. Back, I'm going to put um, these cards for those workshops as well as my business right, cards, so and I left one for you up there. All right, so I'm just going to reconnect here, and you'll see what I'm going to put up here, ladies and gentlemen. Another all right. Put my power back on. Oh, did everyone sign the sign-in sheet for me? Yes. Oh, sure. Everyone signed in? Is that a yes? Yes. Okay. Thank you. And remember, everybody's going to give me their co-star form. So let me just go through the additional resources here. I'm just going to grab some water. Yeah, I grab some water. You have 30 seconds. <laughs> there is no break. All right. All right. Hand me back your postdoc form, folks, your sign form, because I don't want to forget it. Because without it, you're toast. Or red meat, whatever you want to call it. Can you sign that too as well? Pardon, right there?
we go. Right there. Anybody else sign it? Thank you, Danilo. Sign your forms. All right. So, um, so talking about resources and text. So yes, this is your book. Digitally print. You know, hieroglyphics. I don't care. But I own it, and this is the book, actually. You know, there are a couple, there's actually two books on real estate. There's a newer one, but this is Rick Pizer's book, great colleague of mine. And this is, yeah, you know, what more race. Which one is that one? So this is the, um, this is uh, Adrian Schmitz and, and Mike Miles' book. It's slightly different. Um, so I've been using this text. Which one do you have? You have that now. So this is the one I'm using. Um, they're both good, but this is the one where my readings are from. So I'm just letting you know. All right? Maybe next year I'll switch to the other one. Yeah, I'll like that one. Okay. Yeah. All right, so I just want you to know, this is what the readings are from, folks. That's where I'm getting that, if you will. All right, yes? I need to sign the first one. Pardon? I need to get the sheet for... Oh, yeah, you walk in a little bit later. Thank you. All right, thank you. All right? So we're talking about resources now. Next week we're going to get at Mark Ains. He's going to give us a demonstration on CoStars. I told you all, it's a great resource. Remember last year uh, we did have the students do the, uh, Susan, they did that study on the CoStar use of the resources. It was great. That something is proprietary. And of course, now I know the library has all the wonderful resources, but I'm going to tell you, you should simply buy it. It's only 15 bucks for the semester. You should just buy your own subscription to the Wall Street Journal. I'm going to send you the link directly, or you can buy it for the year for 50 bucks. It's dirt cheap. All right? And I mean, there's nothing like having it on your iPhone or iPad. And I love the databases. That gives you back to 1851. I don't care about 1851. I care about now. All right? And Take advantage of your student status. Yeah, come on. That's right. For 15 bucks, one buck a week. And because you're going to be reading this. And I'm going to be testing you on it, actually. But we're going to talk about it, OK? The Wall Street Journal is great. I'm not talking politically or anything. The resource is great. Because I don't always agree with the politically, but that's OK. I was just going to say I find it interesting. They left the boy Donald out of uh, the Wall Street Journal the last few months here. You know, by the way, this is fascinating. <laughs> the Wall Street Journal, actually since Dewey, has never actually taken a position on a candidate. So it's clear. I mean, if you read it, you know. No, no, they have a position. Yeah. They have an attack. But that's okay. You know, it's, it's an excellent paper. But, and just like, and the second thing is, you should be taking advantage of the New York Times, too. These are the two national papers, folks. Kind of left oh, and right. It's kind of funny yeah. the way I'm holding it. But, but they give you resources and news. And, you know, I, you know, you don't have to get it. Actually, you know what I do in the morning? I get up in the morning. I walk the neighborhood with my husband and read figure out the day, but actually, I start the day with, after that with breakfast. I have the physical paper, and I actually have my iPhone in hand. You know why? Because, in fact, I don't let this filter my day. You know, the rest of you, you know, the world is filtering, but I let my brain be my filter. I'm very serious. You know what? No one else is filtering it except me. Except, you know, I'm reading the paper, and then if I see that article, you know, and, and in fact, I, was going to, I don't know if we'll have time to do our exercise. I'll do it next week for the article. And then I go to my app, and then I find the article, and I send it to my Nova account. And then it's our discussion for next week. So, see, the problem is nowadays everything's filtering, Google, Facebook, this and that. But I'll see something here, and you become your own best filter. And that's what makes this so interesting. And you know, it, it, you look at this, and it's fascinating. Here it is: White House economists pull to Trump. But that's important. And you look at the, you, you see all these issues and stuff. And it's not about real estate; it's about the economy, and it affects real estate or business or whatever it is. So these are two really important papers because it tells you what's going on. There's a great page every week in the New York Times. They have a 30-minute interview. And it's fascinating. These are the figures. You want to become, not necessarily like them, but you learn about how they think about real estate, decision making. And here we're teaching you about development. And you want to get a feel for it. You know what? Part of the challenge is, can I teach you how to think?
know, but can I give you the tools to learn how to use what you got up here to think better? Maybe. That's right, I can. And so then, of course, there's ULI. It's great. You are now student members of ULI, but everybody should have the Emerging Trends book. You can download this. I have the physical copy. The Emerging Trends in Real Estate book, and you can just go online. And this gives you all the data and such. You know, it's like, once again, this should become second nature to you. It's good stuff. And once again, this will be up on Blackboard. You'll have this. And then, Urban Land Magazine, this should be bookmarked. This is pretty easy. And, you know, you just look at capital markets, market trends, development and stuff. And every week, you know, you can set this how you want. I let them send me their, you know, info they every week. mail physical copy now, too. Yeah, you can get, yeah, they send it every month. Yeah. And, and you know, it's, it's good to get it. But then they send their news every week, you get something. And it tells you what's going on with the trends. And oh, by the way, here in South Florida, you should be on the real deal. And I, sometimes it's not real, but it's a deal. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, by the way, what was in the real deal yesterday? One of your classmates, Jason Krause, you know Jason? So Jason actually is in, works with a firm called RSI. They do repositioning of real estate assets. And so he took this class last, uh, in the spring, and, um, and he'll be taking the second development class actually in, in, you know, in, in November and December. And so his firm bought a house at the Old Palm Golf Club up in Palm Beach Gardens, kind of next door to where I live. And uh, they took this house, which was you know, X million bucks, and they cleaned it up and positioned it, and they put it on the market for about five point, and it's in the real deal, for about 5.7 or eight or whatever it is. And you know they bought it for about, I mean, I know how much, but I won't tell you, and they marketed it. They started it last spring, and price went this way and that way and whatever it is. So who'd they end up selling it to? A presidential candidate who's no longer running. Jeff Bush. Michael Rubio. Wait, who? Michael Rubio. No, come on. Jeff Bush. Bush. Not Bush, no, who? Uh, Carly Fiorina. Uh, no, no. Bernie uh, Sanders. No, Bernie just bought a $600,000 house on the lake in uh, <laughs> Maine. Oh, um, <laughs> what's this guy's name? Ted Cruz? No! Uh, <laughs> who lives here in Florida? Who lives here in Florida? A Republican candidate? All right, good, you're narrowing down the field. Okay, right. <laughs> I just named a bunch of them, so yeah. I mean, how many more were there? Let's the rest, see. I think, were... Oh, uh, right. Carson? Carson, thank oh, you. Yeah. So we just bought for $4.4 .4 million <laughs> yesterday. So Carson, you know, so he can sell books and do surgery or whatever. All right, I don't think he was a good candidate, but that's so not my... I have a question. question. But Jason, yesterday, actually, they closed the deal and sold the house for $4.4 .4 million. At Old Palm. Yeah. Who is the Nate Silver of the Wall Street Journal? Pardon? What about Nate? Who's the Nate Silver of the Wall Street Journal? No, this is really interesting. So the Wall Street Journal doesn't have, I mean, now it, it, it's interesting. So Nate Silver has 538, and then there's Nate Cohn, who's on the Upshot, which is a great, you know, every couple of days, the Upshot, and Neil Irwin writes from the Upshot, and it's just like, and, and I was going to give you an article, but I don't think we're going to have time today, because it's predictive. And you look at the economy and real estate, and how do you look at trends and how it affects Because I you. watched a little math. Yeah, no, it's really interesting because now they're doing predictions on, once again, it's not just about politics, about what trends mean, and, and by the way, you know, will interest rates go up in, in the fall? So, so, so the real deal actually did just report that, and, and Jason sent me an email like, the night before last night. He said, well, I guess it's public now, you know. So, but yeah, so Ben Carson bought the house, which is really interesting. So, you know, he gave me a preview of the house, actually, when they did the tour before. But look, see, it's part of the stuff that, I won't say that he did that, because, but he learned what we we're doing here and how you position it and all that kind of stuff. So, even you might get into the real deal. So now if you just Google Ben Carson on the real deal and everything like that, that will be fine. So, okay. so you, you know, actually I should be saying, you really shouldn't be looking at your laptops right now, you should be looking at me, but okay. So then there's the Blue Heart Economics Calendar, and this is where you can see all the stuff that's going on every week. It's just, and these are the market indicators of what's happening. And so, and these, and this is why I asked Susan just to look. And so these are the general links that just, 
you know, I go to the links directly. Of course, it's great. And now if we get our real estate tab that gives you these kinds of things, then you'll have kind of a, a great, we'll call it our own uh, uh, Nova bookmark, if you will, that helps us get to the data that will get you to the resources that are very helpful within. And then, of course, then I kind of go crazy, if you will, not only this, so I'm letting her take her iPhone picture, and then I've got even more bookmarks than this, because you know what my drug is? Information. <laughs> I'm serious, man. Okay? You know? Well, it's really easy to open. I mean, the more I have, <laughs> the higher I get. I'm a junkie, so. Okay? Yeah, come on. <laughs> You know, TMI, and then I'm, I'm really off, right? But so, but this is where you, you really become resourceful. And of course, but, but, you know, then, of course, then, you're right, I've got 30 years in the business, I know how to, and I learn how to filter. And then you will begin to get to that place as well at some point here. And so what we're doing is we're giving you direct access to some of these so that you'll begin to dive all right? And we're going to help you do that dive, if you will. Okay? Yes? Now, with these links, uh, do they have the uh, educational subscription, as you mentioned, for like uh, New York Times, Wall Street Journal? Well, for, for New York Times, Wall Street Journal, you're gonna, you have the education. I'm going to give you the links. You can get that. But they're on, the, on, this, uh, on this, uh, on this, on this, sorry, I am my mind. Click, 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 click. Okay. All right, so on the presentation. Okay, you're gonna send on the presentation. Yeah, it's okay. So some of these are free and stuff. With ULI, you know, essentially because you're a member, you've got that. CoStar, we, we basically have got that, you know, upon penalty of death, you know, as long as you don't use it for business. Well, how do you register? Do you have to go to their website? All right, so with CoStar, by your signing these forms, I've now given your email addresses to the folks there, and they're gonna send you out the link so you put your own password and everything in and then every time you log in it says you use this under penalty of death. Seriously. Right? And then you get this incredible portal of information. It's good. It's really good. So, you know, so and then some of these other things I'm gonna recommend we'll go through it. And then you kind of because we haven't subscribed, you get kind of the front page of information to get a little bit of news feed. It's just enough to tease you into what it is that you gotta do. Okay, so, so, you know, as I said, maybe I've got too much stuff there in information. So, you know, I was going to go through an exercise and have you read an article. We'll save that for next week because uh, we're, we ran out of time and that sort of thing. So what I do want to do is just now go through, and Susan, if you want to stay for a few more minutes, to show you why this is important. Because every week I want us to look at the news because it will inform you to be better developing people. Because I do not want you, and I'm going to say this right into that video, don't want you ending up, you could be just like any other real estate broker, because I'm going to say it for the camera. You know what a good real estate broker is? I can play charades with you. A good real estate broker is an oxymoron. <laughs> you know what an oxymoron is? No, it define the word for me. It's uh, so, you say something that's it's it's a contradiction. The opposite. It's it's a just contradiction. Right. Yeah. That's right. Come on. You know, it, 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 the, the exception proves the rule. And, and look, I'm a licensed broker too, because most real estate brokers are in business for the broker, not for the real estate. And most real estate brokers don't understand real estate, they only understand the selling of themselves. And yes, now it's public, okay? And But I want you to understand the actual real estate. And I don't want you to be just the real estate for the broker, I want you to be the real estate for the real estate. And if you understand all of this information, then you're going to be something a whole lot more than that. And that's why you're in this program, you're paying all this money, you're spending all this time. Right guys? and gals, okay? And so, this is what we look at every week. You know, you go to the calendars and you say, all right, I mean, by the way, do you know what the GDP is? Do you know what unemployment is? Do you know what these figures are? By the way, do you know what the unemployment rate is in the country? 4.5, 4.2. Uh, something like that or whatever. 
I mean, you should be able to tell Janet Yellen whether she should raise or lower the interest rates, right? I, I'm serious. You should be able to actually have a conversation, certainly if not now, then by the end of this program, and to walk up and say, Miss Yellen, you know, here's why I think what I think. Why not? You should have that, be able to have that conversation. They're all over in, in Jackson Hole right now, having a nice time, right? At the Four Seasons, the base of the resort. But I'm serious about that. We want to educate you just enough to have that knowledge and information and understand why these factors are important. And I'm going to teach you about leading indicators, lagging indicators, coincident indicators. So when you look at this news, you won't be overwhelmed by all this BS. Excuse me, as my words come out of my mouth here. And the news today, you know, everybody's talking about crazies talk about bigotry and racial stuff and stuff when you should talk about policy and information, which is so much more important. Right? And so when you talk about this, we talk about what's going on. Now this was the information released literally yesterday. What was the GDP? What actually happened to our gross domestic product this past month? And so the experts thought that, you know, the quarter to quarter change was going to be in the one percent range. Yeah, it went up. You know, people say, wait, and I'm going to get to it. So some of the candidates say the economy stinks. Well, in fact, the economy is improving. It's not improving perhaps as much as some of us want it to. OK, that's important. And so is it helping everybody? It probably isn't. And that's the discussion we should be having, not whether it's lousy or bad or it's not working at all. And the question is, how do we get behind the numbers, right? Let's have an intelligent discussion. And whether the index of prices is changing in a way that helps and affects us all. And then you look at the data behind it, right, folks? And really, what's the impact of that growth? And what happens quarterly or seasonally? And look at employment. Yes, in fact, so it's actually 4.9%. So you, you guess it was close, but by the way, not close enough. Because the difference between 4.5 and 4.9% is huge. 